Hi, my name is student Dr. Avina Murrow. And I am social work student Carisha Boynton. And today we're going to talk about the perceived stress scale. So a little bit about the history and what it is. So the perceived stress scale was created by psychologist Sheldon Cohen, Tom Kamarek, and Robin Mermelstein. It was used and is still used as a measure of stress and how certain situations in someone's life can be perceived as stressful or not. There are currently three versions. So the original um, consisted of 14 questions in its survey. And then later came two other versions, the PSS-10 and PSS-4, that both comprised of 10 and 4 questions respectively. And in the current clinical yoga study that we're doing, we did use the PSS-10. So a study was done to assess the accuracy of the perceived stress scale 10 since it is a derivative of the 14. This was done through a literature review, which is where they got 19 different articles and looked to see what was common amongst these articles as well as what were the reoccurring themes. They were specifically looking at articles that were measuring psychometric evaluation, which is basically discussing how the scale was created and how they chose to use what they did in the scale. So among those, they looked for two specific evaluated properties. They looked for validity, which is basically, is the scale measuring what it says it will? Like, how do we know it's measuring for stress and not for um, anxiety or depression? They did this through using four different types of validity. And they also looked for reliability, which is how accurate is the scale? So if we know it's measuring for stress, how do we know that the components in the scale are actually good representatives of stress? And they did two types of reliability for that. In the end, the results show that the psychometric properties were actually superior in the PSS-10 than they were in the PSS-14, and most of the types of validity and reliability showed good results. However, two of them could not be conducted as either good or bad because they just weren't evaluated enough. So when the participant goes and takes the scale, they will answer within the last month for each of the question. They'll use this Likert scale as shown, which they'll say either zero for each question, which is never, one, which is almost never, two, which is sometimes, three, which is fairly often, and four, which is very often for each of the questions. So we just wanted to conclude with a bit of references that we used. And lastly, we just wanted to show a little picture of the three scales. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, so first I'm going to show the PSS-14. Uh, before I talk about it, I do want to mention that these surveys include both positive and negative questions about stress. So this comes from the original, set, uh, original paper that was published by Cohen and his colleagues. So some of the positive questions include, um, for example, in the last month, how often have you felt confident about your ability to handle your personal problems? Or how often have you felt that things are going your way? And some of the negatives include, in your last month, how often have you been angered because of things that happened that were outside of your control? Or how often have you felt upset because of something that happened unexpectedly? Next, we're gonna show the PSS-10. So this comes from the Stress-Free Nurses website. Very similar questions. For example, um, in the last month, how often have you, have you felt nervous or stressed? Um, how often have you been able to control irritations in your life? or how often have you felt you were on top of things? And then lastly, there's the PSS-4. So this comes from the Ohio State University College of Nursing page. So one thing about the PSS-4 is that it creates a lot of convenience since it's short, so you can get results pretty quickly. Um, but again, the questions are similar. For example, in the last month, how often have you felt you were able to control important things in your life? Or in the last month, how often have you felt difficulties were piling up so high that you could not overcome them? So that concludes our presentation on the perceived stress scale and a little bit about the history and background. And we hope you enjoyed. Thank you.